his travel's extremely unusual. He's on a um, short stay visitor visa, which allows him three months. So he's come in July, left in October, and now a matter of two weeks later, he's here again. We sometimes call that a visa run. It can be someone who's just gone overseas to reset their visa so they can come in again for another three months. Sometimes what that can mean is that they, they may be working here illegally. There are around 50,000 illegal people in Australia at any time. Some are here for extended holidays, some for work, and some for love. We found a, an exercise book in his, um, his luggage. It looks like he's written a letter. We don't know who to yet or where they are, but it says, Hi Leanne, how are you? I hope you are fine, sweetheart. I don't want to pay money to get married, but I am willing to marry for good and for life. Please help me. So I guess we need to find out who the Leanne is and where she's located. What was this one about? This is the girl which I met in 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 Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? In Australia? Yeah. yeah. What what do you mean here? Yeah. Don't want to pay money to get married. Because I, I had some fun with her. Mm -hmm. And now then she trying to brainwash me. Mm -hmm. And I went back to Singapore. Then I you know told her back. Forget about it. Officers are not convinced that Izana is telling them the truth. They think this passenger is hiding a lot more than his love life. You haven't ever been in trouble with the police in Singapore? Airlines only make money when their jets are in the air, so any delay that causes a plane to stay on the ground has to be for a very serious reason, like an unclaimed package. Just had a phone call, there's a plane that's just landed from Asia. Uh, we've got a suspicious package that the cleaners have found and we're just going up there to investigate. Why don't you can bring your dogs up to the gate? We've got a suspicious package uh, on an aircraft and I want the old dogs to run over it. Copy. The package could be dangerous and no one will touch it. The trained dog will confirm its contents. Yeah, we just got a call to uh, check out a package up on the aircraft. So we'll go have a look and see how we go. Depending on the dog's reaction, officers will decide how to handle this package. And all that training has paid off. It's narcotics. Dog. Australian immigration laws are amongst the tightest in the world. Were you ever in prison or...? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Drugs. Yeah? Yeah. When was that? Uh, I came on... The last one was... Tony isn't happy with the information he's gathering from Azana, and he thinks immigration should take a closer look. Always I've been for two years, two years, two years, two years, you know. He's just told me that he's been in and out of prison quite a number of times for drug-related offences, and he hasn't declared any criminal convictions on his uh, incoming passenger car. So we'll have to refer him to immigration and see whether they decide to grant him entry or not. Hello, sir. My name's Greg Bob from Immigration. Now, you departed Australia on the 15th of October. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? How long were you in Australia on that trip? About two How and a half months. Two and a half months. Mm -hmm. And was that your first time to Australia? Yeah, first time. So oh. this is now your second time second to Australia? Time. And what did you do, apart from going to the Gold Coast, what things did you do on that trip? Uh, just move around, you know, drinking every day. Do you have criminal convictions? Yeah. You do? Okay. This is the incoming passenger card. Mm -hmm. It's a legal document, a legal declaration, and you've indicated where it says, do you have any criminal convictions you've put no? Can I ask you why you've falsified your declaration today? See, I'm, maybe I did a mistake by marking it, but if I, if I, if I put it no, mm -hmm. as well I tell you all the way no. What's the point of putting it no and telling you yes? This is I very, this is very serious yes, because yes. it's a legal declaration and if you have criminal convictions and you say, in this case you say it's a mistake, but whether it's a mistake or not, you've said no to criminal convictions and you've just admitted to me that you do have some. What I need to do now is I need you to go up to our office, upstairs to the immigration office, 
but I'm going to have to interview you about these convictions, and you're going to have to be upfront, honest, totally honest with me, oh, and tell me exactly what they are. Okay, no problem. All right, sir. and if they're minor offences that are of no harm to the Australian community, we'll let you into Australia. If they're anything more severe, then I have to make an assessment of how severe they are, and then you'll be told whether you'll be allowed into Australia or not. Good fella. Duke de Labrador has earned his keep today. He's just identified narcotics. Yeah, we had a good result. Uh, dogs found what looks like to be a body pack. Um, sometimes passengers, when they get scared, they'll take it off, throw it in the bin. And um, yeah, good result, good boy. Australian Customs. Yeah, mate, just, just to let you know, mate, that um, we've just had a suspected body pack that we found on board an aircraft. The tarmac team are currently with the package and we've got it in an interview room at the moment. A body pack is exactly what its name suggests, a bag holding drugs worn around the body. And this body bag contains a large amount of illegal narcotics. There's a fair bit there. Um, yeah, there's pantyhose, so we would assume that uh, they were either wearing the pantyhose or they've put the pantyhose over the package to make it uh, less susceptible to it being felt by others. Because when we're looking at the package itself, it's, it's taped in plastic, so you don't want it uh, crinkling and, and making noises. It could be just for their own sort of, I guess, comfort. Having it in a stocking obviously makes it feel a lot better and far more comfortable. The only way we can actually carry on the investigation from here on in, from customs side of things, is to provide as much information to the Federal Police as possible. The AFP at the moment will most likely take it to their forensics people. Uh, I don't know what their sort of uh, records have, or you know, even if they do find somebody, there's a possibility that we will catch whoever this person is that have brought these uh, goods into the country. Dog. Illegal Where? items can be picked up on x-ray or by scent. These trays are letter class mail. They have about four and five hundred articles in each one. The dogs, because of the sensitivity of their nose, can detect what we can't on x-ray. Good boy. Find it. <gasps> Good boy. Blue, an ex-pound dog, is a mailroom specialist, trained to find plants, animals, soil and seeds. All I'm doing now, because I'm fanning it, and that releases a bit more odour. Yes, yes, good boy. Good dog. By failing to mark his incoming passenger card correctly, Azana has committed a federal offence. As I've explained to him down in the baggage hall, the incoming passenger card is a legal declaration. <laughs> Technically, we can refuse him entry just on that basis alone but in the interests of natural justice and being fair to him, uh, he said it was a mistake. I explained to him that mistake or otherwise, we still have to get the information from him and make an assessment and a decision on that basis. But generally what we find is that people haven't declared in the past because obviously they don't want to have any hassles, they don't want to be stopped from coming in, they want to enjoy their holidays or for whatever reason, want to escape their previous life, whatever it is, but we have to make an assessment to be fair to the Australian public and the Australian community. Now just have a seat. In many cases, officers get a lot of information just from physical appearances. The situation I explained to you earlier. Actually, we are aware that um, most Singaporeans don't have tattoos, so somebody with tattoos would be someone that we would look at and have a closer look and maybe talk to them about criminal history. I did nothing wrong to be nervous. I'm not a terrorist, you know. I'll just get you wait here for a moment. Mm -hmm. He might not be a terrorist, but if Azana is seen as a threat to our community, he'll have to holiday somewhere else. Sydney Customs Hall. Fake cards there come down for one day. Not Officers cards, have found some suspicious looking credit cards in the luggage of a passenger who arrived from China. Yeah, but look, that doesn't even move. The wing's supposed to move. Yeah, that's and that hologram is supposed to change colour. But I want to get going on this. I want to get him in the room and I want to start it. Okay, Pete, let's move him. Mr. Chong is taken away from the hall to be questioned further. I think all these are all fake. 
counterfeit credit cards. So far, I think he said that he bought them in a pub. 14. So, say each one of them's got 10,000 on it, there's $140,000 worth of stuff they could rip off. Credit card fraud costs Australia close to $200 million a year. So customs are not treating this case lightly. Can you contact the feds, please? The time is now 7.50am. You've been referred back by customs because you've admitted to them uh, that you have spent time in prison, OK? Because you have a, then admitted to It's time to, to decide have, Azana's uh, fate. Can he prove that his past um, is not as dark as it seems? When was the first time you were charged with consumption of heroin, with drug charges? 1981. The first time? And when was the last time? You said there were five separate uh, occasions. Last one was 1998. And in total for the previous four charges, how much time would you say you served? Can you recall? Um, I was 15. 15 years on the previous four charges. And I'm going to be honest with you, because I want you to be honest with me, is it is uh, not looking good for you. Okay, this, this amount of prison time, and based on the visa that you hold... Okay. Immigration yeah. officers now need to make a decision. Just, if you can help yourself to more water, you can have a seat outside if you like. There's nothing to be nervous, Mike. You know why? Because I've tried to never commit any crime over here, you know what I mean? Have you ever wondered why quarantine is so concerned with those wooden items you bring back from holidays? Well, besides the tiny bugs you can't see, sometimes there's an even bigger problem hiding. This passenger just arrived from Southeast Asia. He picked up a couple of souvenirs along the way, including this attractive wooden statue. But that's not all he picked up. Cockroaches pose a health risk. So this traveller and his interesting wooden statue are allowed to pass through the border, minus one stowaway. The quarantine officer just referred the statue to us because, um, in her opinion, it was rather heavy and that. So we x-rayed it, the x-ray was inconclusive. We opened it up and I was going to give it a swab and see if it came up positive for anything and it's basically a big lump of wood and there was a little critter inside. Thank you for that. In the Brisbane mail room, Dog. Richie, can I get you open that one, please? Good boy. Damn. Blue has hit Good on a suspicious boy. letter from overseas. Yep. yep. OK, Bluey's just um, indicated on this letter that was in the tray. And inside it we have some dried plant material, some flower petals. There can be a number of problems with it, depending on what the plant is, whether or not it has seeds. Good boy whether or not there's a disease risk associated with that particular plant, whether or not it's even identifiable. Good boy. The petals will be disposed of while Blue claims his reward. Yes. Good boy. This is a seizable item purely and simply because we can't identify it. When you can't identify it, you don't know what the disease risks associated are, so hence it's a seizable item. Because you can't see that on X-ray, there's absolutely no way to detect it. That's one of the risks that we run with letter class. So this is why dogs are so valuable to our, scre our screening process. Feds have been contacted as well. Right. There's cups in oh, the Customs officers are holding a man suspected of carrying false credit cards. We have a gentleman down here off CX101, uh, Hong Kong passport, surname of Chong, C-H-O-N-G. Uh, what he's got is 14 like counterfeit credit cards. He's got Visa and MasterCard and um, a couple of others. He's basically said that he bought them in a pub. And it seems Mr Chong may not be travelling alone. Earlier, officers searched another suspicious passenger. This guy this morning had a couple of walker talkies in his bag. Couldn't explain it. So he's been waiting outside all morning. He's since met up with two others. Um, we're not sure whether they've been searched or not. And it looks like when they've 
utilise their mobile outside, his is rung, so they could be waiting for him. He's got three numbers on his phone, that's it. Okay, so Customs that have been keeping an eye on the men all morning, suspecting there's a connection between them. And those mobile phone calls have given them the link they need to make a move. All right, you've got one, two, I'll go with you. You know what they look like? All right, well Rob and I will walk out this way and we'll just start walking down that way. Yeah, you go first, yeah. Just why are these men so desperately trying to contact our credit card fraudster? Back in Melbourne, Azana arrived from Singapore with a history of drug convictions and has spent 15 years behind bars. What the go is, um, he ticked no to convictions on his uh, IPC. Right. He's stated that he's got uh, five mm. separate charges for the consumption of heroin. He's only just been out of prison for seven months. No, I agree. It's, um, it's too serious to not, um, to not refuse him entry, actually. Mm. I have decided to cancel your visa okay. under section 1161B of the Act because you are in breach of the condition that says you must not have criminal convictions totaling 12 months or more. Mm -hmm. You need to be aware that you are not going anywhere until yes. such time as you go back to Singapore. In the arrivals hall at Sydney Airport, customs are talking to three men who have been acting suspiciously all morning. Another man has been found with fake credit cards. Could all these men be connected? Customs believes so. I'll we'll have to go to the other end. Take a couple up there, because I only get these two. Shush, shush. Anxious, nervous. Um, we're really wanting to get out of the airport in a way, but obviously waiting for their fourth friend and they got more nervous and more anxious as they realised his flight had landed and he wasn't coming out, so that's when we made a move to go and get them. One of the men, Mr Leong, is taken straight into an interview room for questioning. Why not? While the other two men are questioned outside. Why didn't your friend come and pick you up? Maybe working. Maybe working? Yes, working, oh, okay. to work. So he didn't tell you he'd be working? So what's the problem? You just Oh, it's just, just asking just questions. Just a tourist. Uh, just, just asking questions. Yeah, no, I appreciate ah. that. They're just asking questions, that's all. Just to make sure you are tourists. Okay, okay. okay. It's a slow process, but inside, officers have struck gold. This is a fake. This is a, a counterfeit Hong Kong passport in the same name of the 30 credit counterfeit credit cards we have in the room there. Basically, this one was very easy to pick up. Not only is Mr. Leong carrying a fake passport, He's also got a stash of fake credit cards, just like his associate, Mr. Chong. QF44 from Heathrow has just touched down at Sydney Airport. Custom staff are used to seeing famous faces. At first glance, this appears to be Luciano Pavarotti. But is he? There's the three tenors, there we are. Yeah. 30 quid, three tenors. <laughs> Colin and Mark have travelled 24 hours from London just for a weekend of impersonating their heroes. On a Gucci place. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best Italian. And I eat the same day suits anyways. <laughs> and I go to my local market get most of my stuff. <laughs> While customs officer Nathan realises these are not the real tenants, he's going to let them off with a song. Once a jolly swag man can buy a billabong under the shade of a moonlit tree. Are you trying to get us kicked out of Australia? <laughs> You're succeeding. In customs, the game's up for two Chinese passengers. This second gentleman will be up on criminal charges, definitely. And um, we're going to call the Australian Federal Police back to take the second gentleman. And um, we have two, two now, which are. A bit will be detained. But Customs still has concerns about the other two men. Aaron, when you go out, can you explain that they've been imp implemented now criminally and not just immigration yeah, problem? What we're thinking at the moment is they're all connected. 
with the cards, yep. but uh, immigration also feel that something bigger to this, so uh, just through their, their movements and what they've done. So now they are referred to immigration. My friend, can you come with me? Immigration wants to speak to you. Because of their association with Mr. Leong and Mr. Chong, the two men were detained by immigration, refused entry and sent back to Hong Kong. Mr. Leong and Mr. Chong were each in possession of 35 fake credit cards with an estimated street value of $280,000 and each had a counterfeit passport. They both pleaded guilty and had been sentenced to 15 months imprisonment.